Hello, welcome to the Mediocre Takes podcast, the podcast where we share our mediocre takes on the shows and movies we watch. I'm Marco and I'm here with my co-host Mel. How are you doing, Mel? The annual DC Pride comic this year was actually pretty good. Um, It was definitely better than last year's. 8 out of 10 pink kryptonites. Oh my god, I've finally gone back into comics and manga after a long time of not reading them. I'm reading this really good one. I think it's a graphic novel actually called Aquacorn Cove or something like that. I don't know, it's gay. So. Oh, you know what? You That's should read cool. Superman Son of Kal-El. Yeah, I know his son's gay. Yeah, and like, That's no, it. it's really, their, their relationship is one of the very few homosexual relationships that I can read and enjoy and it's mostly because they are superhumans and I really love like superheroes so they get a pass. Today we're going to be continuing our first kill discussion but this time Mal is going to be explaining the plot summary of what happened so yeah let's just get started. Episode 5. In the last episode Cass and Juliet run away and in this episode they end up breaking into the school where they change and gossip and discuss their feelings for each other. They make their way to the auditorium where there seems to be a set for the play Romeo and Juliet and then they get to know each other some more. They hear a noise but assume it's nothing and end up falling asleep in the bed on stage which is totally normal. They call and talk to their parents the next day and tell them that they're staying to help the, I don't know, weird thespians prepare for the play. Ben has a private conversation with Juliet where they take turns hurting each other's feelings. Meanwhile, at the Fairmont household, Juliet's parents argue over the arranged marriage between Eleanor before Eleanor assures her dad that she's fine with it. They also bring up the fact that the dad is shedding, kind of like a snake. We then see Eleanor, her mom, and her grandma talk power and strategy and speak a cute vampire cult chant. We switch back to the school where Ben goes into the locker room to be homosexual with Noah, who, if you don't remember, is cosplaying as a straight guy. They get into an argument after Ben takes a picture of him and it's broken up when they see a humanoid figure whiz past them and then the alarm is pulled. Ben manages to take a picture of it and then the school is put into lockdown. Ben sends the picture to Juliet who shows it to Cal and she identifies it as a zombie. We switch to the meeting between uh, the Fairmont and Davenport family where we find out Canada has free range blood servants. Back to Ben and Noah. Noah is so scared of people thinking he's a homosexual, he leaves the locker room and ends up getting his spine ripped out from the zombie. Pretty ironic. Cal and Juliet's moms quickly meet to make a temporary truce. Cal and Juliet find the zombie in the cafeteria and fight her before realizing it's Smashly. Cass beheads her. Juliet notices Cass was injured and pulls an Edward by commenting about how her blood is, like, extra tantalizing. Eleanor calls off the arrangement after finding out she'd have to have multiple kids. The grandma confronts the dad in an upstairs bedroom before he turns a little bit snakish and eats her whole. Juliet and Cass move Smashley's body outside and Juliet almost attacks Cass. Oliver and his girlfriend end up running into them outside and they find out that Oliver or his witch girlfriend were the ones that turned Smashley into a zombie. Oliver offers that he can turn Juliet into a human if he helps her bring Eleanor down. I know that there are some people who found it a bit funny when Juliet and Cal talk about Romeo and Juliet, but for me, it was just like too on the nose and too cheesy. I love the fact that Cal doesn't tell her mom, if you try to come for us, then we'll run away, like Juliet told her mom, because like, of course you wouldn't tell that to your POC parent. Like, they would get pissed. Okay, so the fact that Ben is dating a closeted man, well, dating on quotes, makes me wonder why the writers decide to write it like that. Like, of course, people are closeted and date anyways, but I just really wasn't a fan of that. So we learned this in this episode, but I like that in this episode when Eleanor and the other people are like talking about the marriage arrangements, they talk about how like women are preferred instead of men, which I really enjoyed. I was surprised that the zombie was smashly it was surprising when the father ate the grandmother i was really weirded out like they literally made out after eating the grandmother like he ate her then he told the mother i ate the grandmother and then they made out and i was like would you make out with someone who ate your grandmother or your mother i don't know it was just a really <laughs> weird thing <laughs> like would you, would you mel i mean if my if my mom okay well 
<laughs> if my oh, mom yeah, was looking, <laughs> well, let's say if I were in his shoes, wait, wait, if I were in her shoes and my husband did that, I wouldn't get mad. No, I feel like for her situation, I really feel like that she reacted in a way that made sense. And of course, there are free range humans in Canada. That just makes sense. So I know they go to like a rich people school, but it was so gross to me that they like felt comfortable enough to take showers at the school. Like, I don't know, schools just seem so dirty to me for the school to just like casually buy a bed for a play is so crazy to me like I, I don't know i just couldn't get over that and then for them to sleep in it it was just weird it was also so crazy to me that the parents put up such a superficial fight like after everything those families have been through they're just like oh kids all right you get one day Ben, once again, is so valid for being upset at everything. Like, his response to a lot of this is how I think a lot of us would react. And I just feel like Juliet hasn't really taken the time to properly bring him into her world, which I feel like is where most of the tension between them comes from. The The chant that those three white women did felt very nefarious. Not because they're vampires. I don't know. It just it felt a little clanny, if you know what I mean. Smashly actually was an ally for killing Noah, especially the way she did it with Noah like being spineless metaphorically and then for him to literally be spineless I don't know seems like poetic justice to me I admire Eleanor for agreeing to the marriage as for as long as she did considering she would have to marry a Canadian and the scene of the dad telling the mom he ate her mom was like so funny to me <laughs> just the fact that he ate her and then how they just like are all pretty calm about it like i feel like the dad is the most nervous about everything eleanor was just there like oh shit anyway and then the mom was just sort of like oh i love you so much husband i don't know it sort of feels like a normal white family to me we open with news people the school discussing the death the death of noah Cass, juliet and their moms are brought into the school where some suits ask if they knew anything about ben's death after finding security footage of them and we find out a mother militia has formed called Mothers Against All Monsters, or MAM for short. Cass finds out she will have to go through a severing to end the link she has with Juliet. The Burns and Fairmont parents have a meeting. They make a deal to mess with the security footage and keep the girls from each other. We then see the severing ritual that's being performed by Cass's older brother, Cass's older brother Theo. During the ritual, Theo sees his own visions of his mother being bitten and killed by a vampire. Cal sneaks out at night to Juliet's house and gets into a room. They have some girl talk and Cal officially breaks things off after being severed from Juliet. Juliet says, then why are you in my dreams? And then they wake up. Juliet was woken up by a knock at her bedroom and she finds a black box there. The box had snakeskin boots interesting choice. Eleanor tells Juliet they're having a girls night. Cass's brother Theo is still not feeling well from the ritual and her other brother Apollo is trying to infiltrate the Mayhem group by getting into their online group and she helps him. Eleanor takes Juliet to a club where she gets a guy to feed off. They take turns sipping his juice before he dies. Eleanor shows Juliet where she dumps her victims, which is a pond with a human shredder in it. Juliet tells Eleanor that this was wrong and vampires don't need to kill to feed. Juliet goes to see Ben where they have some girl talk, make up, and platonically spoon each other. Juliet's mom and Eleanor have a talk and Eleanor is given a necklace. We switch to Apollo at a ma'am meeting that is temporarily interrupted by Eleanor who came by. Juliet goes to see Cass. They're interrupted by Theo texting her that they need to talk. Theo lets her know that the vampires that killed his mom was a legacy. Juliet spends a night. Some of the students go out to the forest to have a kind of remembrance for uh, Noah. Noah's beard, Philippa, brings her dog that finds the buried body of Mr. Creepy Blue Eyes. The severing was so weird, like it looked really weird. If I were at the school principal and the other like faculty members mad about the fact that they literally broke in and slept in like the stage last night. Cal and Juliet broke in like no one noticed, no one said anything about it. I was just like, okay. It's never brought up in this season. So I'm like, okay, I guess. I, I thought it was going to be like another plot point. Like uh, they, they literally broke a window. The fact that Juliet purposely dropped a ring is so stupid. Like it was so unnecessary. I like Theo's backstory. I was confused during the dream sequence. Like when I watched those scenes, I felt like I was in a dream and it took me like 20 minutes to figure out what was going on. I was really weirded out by the club scene. Like how did Juliet murder a man? Like I get that she was drunk a bit and also high, but like 
don't know. It was weird. Like, she should have known what Eleanor was going to do to her. Like, of course she was going to make her, like, kill someone. Also, how do people not notice that a literal child is in there? Do you cuddle with your friends? Because I've never have. And that was kind of weird. No, I think the closest I've ever gotten to that was, like, one of my friends gave me a back rub once. But that was weird. That was very strange. <laughs> anyway, I don't know. It sort of made me wish that I had that I was close to that was like close to someone that much. The severing ritual was such a good way to bring Theo into the storyline, especially since he does become an important part of it later on. The it was all just a dream scene was, in my opinion, so good because it took me by surprise. I also liked the cute little hint with the boots being snakeskin. I was really rooting for Ben's mom to be a true ally, but when when I heard her say lame stream medium, I knew she was an enemy and it was truly tragic. Also, I can't get over the fact that Eleanor and Juliet were so comfortable, like, feeding on someone literally in public like they might have been in a kind of secluded area once again it was still in public the thing about the pond monster is like it was probably supposed to be a crocodile but it's also likely that eleanor just kind of has a pet monster that she keeps in there which is one of the coolest parts about supernatural shows they can create these scenarios where us the viewers can figure out a reasonable explanation for something but because of the world these characters are in it's also possible it's something more nefarious right when i saw eleanor had keepsakes for uh from her victims i knew it would come back to bite her in the ass that's like one of the biggest mistakes serial killers make and literally everyone knows it and Cass's room is so weird i don't know if that's just like how rich kids live or if it was just sort of like how the designers of the show wanted it to look but it i don't know it just felt like weird and that little dog was so cute like uh, <laughs> honestly i love small dogs and it was also so on brand for a small dog to find a buried body in a forest okay i think you mentioned something about the bar and them being in an open space when i first watched that scene i thought they were like right in front of the entrance like i thought they left the door and then and then we're at the yeah. entrance of the bar. They're in some kind of alley or something, but yeah. still in the open near a bar. <laughs> Episode 7. Students are questioned about the body and uh, the body in the forest and why they were in the area a few nights ago. This show's version of MAGA protests at a school about not wanting to live with monsters. Cal brings Juliet over to see if her parents can help prove Juliet's innocence. Cal tells her parents Mr. Creepy Eyes tried to abduct her, but Juliet saved her. Cass's mom says they won't help but they also won't hinder. Ben tries to convince his mom that racism isn't cool, but she's insistent on girl bossing. The Burns house is visited by people from the guild and Cal and Juliet escape with Theo's car. She calls Oliver to ask if they can hide there. Theo finds out that they can figure out which legacy killed his mom by the ring they wear. Cal and Juliet end up driving to a monster checkpoint and are checked for monsters. Juliet lies and says they're on their way to her house and one of the Cops insists on uh, escorting them. Cal's mom and older brothers try to have a conversation. Theo has like major mommy issues. Cal and Juliet make it to Juliet's house and as the cop is leaving, she calls someone and says she thinks she found the monster. Oliver shows up to get the girls at um, Juliet's house, but is choked out by his dad and leaves. Ma'am shows up at their house and Ben has a miscommunication with his mom, who now believes Cal is the monster. Apollo meets Eleanor to try and get information from, from her, and they're interrupted by Theo. They fight her, and Apollo ends up accidentally stabbing Theo. Eleanor alters her memories before leaving. So I was kind of surprised that everyone knows there are monsters from the beginning, but the more I think about it, the less it seems to make sense. Like, it's obvious that this wasn't thought through well enough. So the fact that when Oliver and the witch make out, we can see a tarot card, and the tarot card is the devil. And I feel like this was way too on the nose. I don't know what the devil means when it comes to tarot card readings, but I just know it was, like, way too on the nose like i was like really come on i'm still wondering what oliver did and and when we do find out what oliver did it doesn't make sense either because they tell him he's like a monster and everything for like brutally killing someone but like all he did was train people so i was confused on that oh so i was kind of interested that the twist is that people think that cow is a monster but the more i think about it, the mess it like sense she literally touched silver and was okay like and the cops saw her too they think it's her because she's black that makes sense too so during the interviews when Philippa says sus, it was so off-putting to me. 
like it pulled me out of my little bubble and i just sort of sat there like why would they put that in the script those protesters at school felt so on brand for those types the fact that the cop heard the joke about you know, juliet saying cal was a monster her actually <laughs> believing it is such cop behavior i understand not liking your kid choking them out even if the snake that plunged into your chest is changing you and your behavior seems like a lot also they were not being subtle at all by making the cop a part of a hate group apollo accidentally stabbing theo uh, was racist and uh juliet asking if her heart is safe with Cal was literally like such a cute little moment. The last episode, Cal and Juliet meet up with Apollo in the bathrooms. Juliet gets to mourn a little bit. Then Juliet tells them that they have to leave and she cleans up a bit before, uh, after them before leaving herself. As she leaves, she finds her sister's lipstick on the ground. Cal and Apollo make it home and see Theo at the dinner table, acting pretty happy and enthusiastic. But then they notice that he's acting a bit strange before he excuses himself. Once he gets into his room, he realizes he's a vampire. Juliet confronts Eleanor and they get into an argument. Juliet steals Eleanor's key to her storage unit and gives it to Oliver. They give the information to the cops who arrest Eleanor. Oliver gets to see Eleanor, pretending he's her lawyer, and they have a talk where Eleanor tells him that basically she acts like a bitch because she's a bitch no real ulterior motive. The Burns family finds out Theo is a vampire and ties him up in the basement. Cal's parents have an argument on what to do with him, with the dad wanting to kill him and the mom refusing to let him. Juliet's parents try to have a sexy time and are interrupted by a message from the legacy. They're requesting to speak to the dead grandma. Apollo is starting to remember what happened and Theo tries to escape. He makes it outside and runs into Juliet, who is coming to visit before fighting with his brother. Juliet stops them and we find out Juliet accidentally turned him while trying to let him die with dignity. The Burns family argue once again over whether or not to kill Theo. They let the mom say goodbye to Theo because they did decide to kill him. And as she's alone with him, she ends up breaking him out and takes him to Oliver, who then introduces him to a group of his monster friends and tells him that he came back to Savannah to ruin lives. That is how this show ends on a cliffhanger. So this episode was really good in my opinion like it really surprised me i don't even have words to explain it the entire episode kept me on the edge what i really loved is how people reacted to theo being turned into a vampire my main question is why didn't they check his pulse like it seems like a no-brainer to me now sure he was stabbed but he could have survived if they called an ambulance fast enough or something at least that's my opinion i don't know how stabbings work so don't ask me <laughs> I'm not a doctor. Why is Cal so mad that Juliet let Theo live instead of letting him die? Like, that made no sense for me. Uh, I don't know. I would have been happy that someone was alive, I guess. I mean, I, th I think it's the fact that the whole family knew that he was turned into something that the family has been raised to believe is evil and that should be killed and then also the fact that he became the monster that killed his mom i guess i, I still don't really get it i guess what's that meme it's like uh i don't get it you you win with your lgbt stuff you win with your gay stuff and all that <laughs> i don't really get it okay i know what you mean <laughs> <laughs> if i find that meme I'll, I'll 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 put a clip of it in here so you guys understand what i mean Fine, you win with your gay stuff. That's what you want, right? To win. Eleanor got what was coming, and that's all I'll say on that. And something I just thought of uh, while I was watching this episode is how come the grandmother isn't alive? Like, she's a legacy vampire, so shouldn't she be alright? Or are legacies able to kill other legacies? Or is it the snake that killed her? Like, I'm just curious about that. Because I feel like she should be alive, technically, but I don't know. Maybe, like, she got ripped into a bunch of pieces, and that's why she's dead? I don't know. Oh, I genuinely thought that Theo wasn't Theo and that someone was trying to be Theo when we first saw him. The way that Apollo was holding Theo at the end of the last episode in the position of the pool of blood really makes me wonder like how the fuck no one saw that. I love the way they showed Eleanor's lipstick uh, at the beginning of the show, and that is how Juliet finds out who did it. When I first saw Theo at the dinner, just like you, my first thought was that it was some sort of like shifter monster sent by Oliver, uh, but honestly, him being a vampire was such a better twist. The confrontation between Eleanor and Juliet was honestly long overdue, and Juliet like disrespecting her surroundings was so girl boss. The scene of Juliet looking down at Eleanor as she gets taken away in cuffs, literally, once 
once again, that was her, that was Juliet's literally one girl boss moment in this whole show. The thing with Oliver wanting to know why Eleanor ruined his life and Eleanor just telling him that she felt like it, I don't know why he didn't think she was just a bad person in general. Like, I don't know how he could think, oh, she must have an ulterior motive. She can't just like have this black heart. It just, I don't know. It was, I don't know. It was just kind of weird that, because <laughs> even I picked that up after the first few times I saw her, I knew that she was going to be a pretty nefarious person throughout this whole show. The heartbreak and pain that the Burns family was going through made me sad. These black people don't deserve this. That sexy scene between the two parents was so like unnecessary like nothing too explicit happened this is this is a lesbian show for lesbians um that th that was not the scene to put in here you cannot convince me that theo didn't purposefully body check juliet when he was running out of the house it was just i don't know the way he, he literally like he did it on purpose and i know it the twist that juliet was the one that turned him actually did surprise me i kind of thought it would have been oliver since they have basically set it up to be like you know him and his girlfriend are the ones behind the scenes creating these situations juliet really should have read the room during her argument with cal the fact that she brought up everyone wanting them apart which is why they need to stay together i actively avoid watching and reading fictional stories where black characters are in pain uh as a black person in america i see that all the time in the real world seeing them make the decision to kill theo did make me cry and the mom saving him made me cry harder i just wish my mom loved me that much cal running and juliet driving at the end i completely thought i completely thought cal was going to get hit by that big ass range rover i really thought that was going to be one of the last scenes but it wasn't <laughs> we get to see a bunch of roided up monsters chilling in oliver's backyard looking goofy as fuck with a whatever leftover money they had the cgi was just <laughs> it was so funny but yeah it left on a cliffhanger sadly overall i think this is an okay show sure it's mediocre but it, it's it's decent either way i will say the cgi is bad the writing can be really bad at times but when it's good it's good especially during the last episode like i really loved the last episode it turned it around for me like it made me think wow this show can actually go places i think that if you're queer and you want more mediocre queer media then like here you go on the silver platter eat up yum yum i like the fact that we have like a black family they're shown in a positive light even if like the ending is a little sad for them if they ever made a season two i would hope that they would actually get a happy ending but since there's no season two we'll never know what's going to happen to them victoria schwab the person who wrote the script for this show uh, is also an author you can go check out their books their books are actually decent i think i've read one of her books before it was all right i liked it i have heard that, that her books are a lot better than her tv show and that this tv series was actually based off a short story if you want to learn more about where this series comes from like google google is your best friend you will literally find out more about this show and the short story it's based off of this show had a lot of potential they created this world and set up a lot of subplots that would have been so interesting to explore in future seasons especially near the end we didn't only have one unresolved situation we had like five and all of them were really interesting but sadly the show fell victim to the old people not realizing they can make more money and more faithful customers if they made more than just reality shows about straight people sledding around a mansion for a month listen i don't know how ips work i don't know how copyright or whatever works but if sh if she can like maintain this story in some way and i really hope that she continues it with books just so we get some sort of official ending that would be really nice and one last thing okay if you are interested in romancing vampires and the supernatural i implore you to check out the wayhaven chronicles they're interactive novels where you get to be the main character you get to solve supernatural crimes and romance vampires and other characters or romance no one at all you get to choose the gender of most of the romanceable characters so you can be gay uh this isn't an advert but i just wanted to include something supplemental for those who crave canonically homosexual vampire human relationships that won't be cancelled also it's really well written so check that out if you're interested or any of the other books that this uh the writer of the show made. I'm searching up you went with your gay stuff and it keeps on repeating for some reason. 
<laughs> Anyways, I'm I'm trying to find the link so I can like download it and put it in the podcast. Okay. Anyways, you guys, that's our thoughts on First Kill. If if you want to listen to more of our podcast episodes, they're like literally right there. So listen to them, please. We're trying to get more popular, I guess. This month is June, which is obviously Pride Month. So we're going to continue to talk about more queer shows and movies. Uh, we're going to be talking about the movie Saving Face, which is uh, a Chinese lesbian film. And we're also going to be talking uh, about Japanese anime called Sasuke and Miyano, which is a very cute, very slice of life, very slow burn male male romance that I know Mal probably won't like, but I'm gonna make her watch it anyway. If you want to send us a voice message on Anchor, there'll be a link in the description below to do so. We also have an Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, which are at MidTakesPod, which will also be in the description below. And that's everything, so goodbye.